Um, the only difference here now is when we need to write the equation of the line, but now it has to be perpendicular to it. Again, if we still want to write the equation in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, we still need to identify what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. The only difference with this problem is it's saying we want to write an equation on a line that is perpendicular. Well, parallel lines had exactly the same slope, right? So all we did was rewrote the same slope. Now, when you're dealing with perpendicular lines, you have to use what we call opposite reciprocal slopes. So whatever the sign is, it's going to be opposite. If it's positive, the new slope is negative. If it's negative, the new slope would be positive. If it's not written as a fraction, you got this. Basically, this is written as a fraction of 2 over 1. You just flip the numerator and the denominator. They're just reciprocals of each other. We call it opposite reciprocals. So we now know what the slope is, the new slope, but we don't know what the point is. And let's say the problem says write it in point slope form and then write it in slope intercept form. Well, remember, my point slope equation looks like this y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And basically what point slope allows us to do is when we're given a point and a slope, we can plug it in. So basically, I'm going to plug in. I'm going to call this x1 and y1. It's just a different way to label the points. I'm going to plug those points in for x1 and y1. And I'm going to plug in negative 1 half in for m. So I'd have y minus negative 1 equals negative 1 half times x minus 9. Please make sure, guys, when it's minus, since that y one's negative, I put it in parentheses. That reminds me that that's really plus. And then here, I'm going to apply distributive property. So I have negative 1 half x. And then this becomes positive 9 halves. Now, this is what it would be in point slope form. But if it says now to write it in slope intercept form, all I have to do is subtract the 1 over there. So I'd subtract 1, subtract 1, and I have y equals negative 1 half x. Uh-oh. Now we have some fraction operations. Does anybody remember how to subtract a fraction from a whole number? You always have to change your whole number to a fraction. So let's change that to 1. But we can't subtract fractions unless they have common denominators. Well, the common denominator between 2 and 1 is going to be 2. So I'm going to create equivalent fractions. So I have 9 over 2 minus 2 over 2 which equals a positive 7 halves. I do not want to see the decimal 3.5. Unless you're graphing, then that would be OK. Anybody have questions on that? Do you agree with me that 1 over 1 is the same thing as 2 over 2? Right. right. But now 2 over 2, I can subtract fr from 9 halves because they have the same denominator.